Listen, you and I both know that The Locked Tomb is one of the best things you've ever read, and I'm saying this because I just finished reading Nona, so you know a Nona Memes video is coming very soon. Tamsin Muir is known for inserting a huge number of references and memes into her writing in a kind of weirdly normal and yet completely outrageous way. So let's see how many we can fit into this video, and if you think I've missed any in this video, please add them in the comments so we can all share. So I'm going to warn you right now, if you've not read Gideon the Ninth or Harry the Ninth and you want to, which I mean you should, then please do not watch this video because it's going to contain some major spoilers. P.S. Huge credit goes to Jin Jenny from Reading the End who pinpointed a good number of the memes in this video. A link to their list is in the description of this video. We start on page 63 where Harrow wakes up in her room to see Ianthi waiting there for her. And before Harrow has a chance to so much as complain, Ianthi hands her her letter which explains her current situation. After reading and discussing the letter, Ianthi says, What's more, now we're about to embark on what promises to be a truly beautiful friendship, with me the lone fruitful thing in your salted field, etc. So I'll thank you not to embark on the I have been done by act. This is in fact a Casablanca reference. At the end of Casablanca, Rick Blaine has lost everything. He stays behind in Casablanca and lets Ilsa board a plane and escape. Major Straza tries to stop them, but Rick shoots him, all in front of Captain Louis Renault. When the police arrive, Louis has the opportunity to turn Rick in, but he doesn't. As the two men walk away, Rick tells the captain. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. On page 155, Harrow is starting to get used to Lecter life and she's trying to get used to her new surroundings. So she spends some time with God talking about Cytheria. God mentions his regrets about not noticing how hard Cytheria worked when Harrow says, a seventh house floor, a fatal longing for the picturesque. This is a reference to the fantastic book, The Secret History. In fact, it's a reference to the first paragraph in chapter one. Does such a thing as the fatal floor, that showy dark crack running down the middle of a life, exist outside literature. I used to think it didn't, now I think it does. And I think that mine is this, a morbid longing for the picturesque at all costs. A fatal flaw is a specific aspect of someone's personality which stops them from being happy, successful, or living a long and fruitful life. In terms of the seventh house, the fatal longing for the picturesque is their fatal flaw. They're trying to make things as beautiful as possible, no matter what it takes which is apt because the seventh house has an obsession with the beauty of death. They've tried to harness the Thanagy in their bodies with their illness in order to become more powerful. Okay, the next one is just pure fun and one I spotted immediately while reading. On page 205, Harrow is perhaps in the past or in a dream state at Cannon House. When the cavaliers of the house move Camilla to the morgue, Abigail removes a bunch of stuff from Camilla's pockets and Harrow takes a look. Ortis warns her not to open the piece of paper that she finds, but she does, and on it is written something important. But Ortis says, It is a drawing of the letter S. The letter in question is constructed from six short marks stacked vertically three by three. There are two triangles on the top and bottom, which, along with some diagonal strokes, form a calligraphic S. Well, I don't know about you, but six short marks stacked vertically, three by three, with two triangles on the top and bottom, and some diagonal strokes, looks a little bit like something every kid in school tried at least once in their life. On page 267, Harrow and Ianthi are invited to a meal with God and the other lectors, but Ianthi isn't happy with how Harrow's dressed, so she gives her a little makeover, something with which even Ianthi says is pretty cliche. Once done, Harrow and Ianthi make their way to Augustine's room because they've been invited there 10 minutes before the main meal. And on seeing Harrow, Augustine says, and so the crow can be a swan. This is in fact a Romeo and Juliet reference. In act one, scene two, Romeo has just been invited to a really fancy meal and his love interest, Rosaline, will be there. But he's just been rejected by Rosaline, so he's feeling a bit lovesick. So his friend Benvolio says, Thou so lovest with all the admired beauties of Verona, go thither 
and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I'll make thee think thy swan a crow. Which basically means, go there and, without bias, compare her to some of the girls I'll point out to you. I'll show you that the woman you think is beautiful as a swan is in fact as ugly as a crow. I guess what Augustine is trying to say with and so the crow can be a swan is the opposite of what Benvolio is saying. But still, quite the complicit. On page 335, Harrow is performing her lecture duties when she suddenly hears a blazing alarm, which turns out to be the resurrection beast. All the lectors go to bed and wait out the actual arrival of the resurrection beast, and then two months later, they're all sitting at the breakfast table where Mercy Morn tells them the plan. While drawing on the whiteboard, some of the lectors make suggestions to help the plan, and Mercy Morn repeatedly says, next, when she finally says for the last time, it's a resurrection beast, honey. Thank you, next. This is actually an incredibly clever reference to a church lady who asks her community Facebook group to help with transportation. She has a very specific request and nobody seems to be giving her a decent answer. So to eat, she says, next, next, next. Note the two exclamation marks. On page 344, Harris spends some more time with God the Emperor and asks him why he shuts himself in his room when nobody else does. And to this he explains what would happen to the Nine Planets if he died and what would happen to Dominicus too. When he says, If I fought the Heralds I might well go mad, which would be the same thing. So I'm shut in here, walled in really. To prevent the Nine Houses becoming a nun house with less grief. This is perhaps the most outrageous meme in the entire book, and Tamsin has a way of providing a really emotionally gripping scene and then just breaking it with some kind of comic relief in the form of a meme. And if you spot it, it really works. So this meme in question is Nun Pizza with Left Beef. This is when a Domino's Pizza customer decided to test the limits of topping customization. Ordering a pizza with no sauce, no cheese, and no toppings except for beef on the left half. You can even get this as a necklace on Etsy. Astounding. On page 369, Harrow is in her memories or the past or something. And she's squaring up to Ortus to try and get him to have a fight with her so that she can prove herself to be the ninth cavalier. So she has some kind of purpose. Ortus mentions that she doesn't even want to carry the blade for the Reverend Daughter, and then Harrow responds by saying a bunch of things that she would actually like to do to the Reverend Daughter when Ortus says, but you know she quite, no. And they say she is petitioning for, continue that sentence, she said, and I'll make it to the pain. My friends are going to be so proud of me for this one because To The Pain is a reference from The Princess Bride. In one particular scene, Humperdinck steps into a room to see Wesley and Buttercup together. He says, to the death, and Wesley says, no, to the pain. Humperdinck has never heard of the phrase, so Wesley enlightens him. To the pain means the first thing you lose will be your feet below the ankles, then your hands at the wrists, next your nose. And then my tongue, I suppose. I killed you too quickly the last time. A mistake I don't mean to duplicate tonight. I wasn't finished. The next thing you lose will be your left eye, followed by your right. And then my ears, I understand. Let's get on with it. Wrong! Your ears you keep, and I'll tell you why. So that every shriek of every child at seeing your hideousness will be yours to cherish. Every babe that weeps at your approach, every woman who cries out, Dear God, what is that thing? will echo in your perfect ears. That is what the pain means. It means I leave you in anguish, wallowing in freakish misery forever. Harrow is clearly saying here that if he doesn't shut up, she's going to be so annoyed with him that she's going to make this battle to the pain. On page 397, Harrow is back in Cannon House, which we now know is in the River Beyond. Harrow and Abigail are discussing in general the River Beyond and its presence when Abigail says, I firmly believe that the kindly emperor knows nothing of that undiscovered country. He never claimed omnipotence. The phrase undiscovered country specifically refers to a line in Hamlet's To Be or Not To Be soliloquy. But that. The dread of something after death. He 
undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will. Hamlet refers to the undiscovered country as the afterlife, and our lack of knowledge and fear of it, which seems pretty accurate to use in this context. On page 429, Gideon has taken control of Harrow's body and is talking to her through it, almost like a kind of diary. You know it and I know it, this part of the book was amazing. Gideon's voice is back, and when she comes across Ianthe, she gets so angry at how Ianthe has treated Harrow that she says to Harrow, I did a bunch of shit I'm not proud of. Some of it I regret, some of it I don't. I actually regret not kicking Crux down a flight of stairs and watching him go, oof ow my bones, right down each step. And then she basically says she's going to wreck Ianthe. The line oof ow my bones refers to the meme bone hurting juice. In 2016, the Fun Silly Drawings for Fun Silly People Facebook page posted a Pooh comic where Pooh says, Ooh, my bones hurt a lot. Ooh, oof, my boons. After drinking the bone hurting juice. And it took off from there. On page 465, Gideon is walking with Ianthe to meet God for the first time when they spot that the door is kind of open a bit. And so they eavesdrop and listen in on what's happening. Both Gideon and Ianthe hear two people talking, so when Commander Wake asks the Emperor to use their full name, the Emperor says, Awake remembrance of these valiant dead. Kia hua kotepai. Snap back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. This reference is a two-parter because the part that says Kia hua kotepai is a line from the Maori verse in the New Zealand national anthem. It means roughly, and if I have this wrong, let me know. Let good things come forth, or may good things flourish. Snap back to reality, oops, there goes gravity, is a line from the Eminem song Lose Yourself, but more importantly, it's also a meme. The snap back to reality meme is a series of video edits that begin with a clip depicting something desirable, which then cuts to something bad happening, hitting on each lyric. I'll add an example link in the description below because I probably can't add it into this video because I'll get a copyright strike. The best thing about this line is that Commander Wake clearly thinks it's some ancient poem with loads of meaning, but the Emperor knows that it's a joke, but because he's so old, he's the only one that's going to get it. On page 468, we're still spying on the Emperor and Commander Wake talking when Mercy Morn and Augustine enter the room and the Emperor introduces the person inside Cytheria, saying, Mercy Morn the first. Augustine the first. Meet Commander, wake me up inside. Sincerest apologies if I got that wrong. This is, of course, the lyrics from the Evanescent song, Bring Me to Life, which I absolutely loved back in the day. Again, making a joke nobody will get. Okay, so this one isn't even a reference, but I'd be mad at me if I didn't include it. On page 475, Gideon, upon wondering who her parents were her entire life, finally discovers the truth. Everyone is talking about Gideon like she's not there, and Gideon says, I'm not fucking dead. Then the Emperor stands and stares at Gideon for a one earth-stopping moment and says, Hi, not fucking dead. I'm dad. What a dad joke. Tamsin clearly knows how to take you from one emotion to the next in seconds. On page 504 and in Harry's final lines of the book, she clambers into the locked tomb next to the body and feels a piece of paper scrunched up next to her. She opens it and sees. A magazine page showing a woman in a cohort uniform that's far from official. She then says, Frontline titties of the fifth. Nav you ass. That's not even a real publication. While this isn't a reference, I wanted to include it because it's such a clear demonstration of Tamsin Muir's skill at storytelling. This is a boomerang joke which seems at first to be a pair of unrelated jokes. At the end of the first joke, the boomerang is tossed away, leaving the confused listener without a punchline. At the end of the second joke, the boomerang returns and the listener laughs. In Gideon the Ninth, Gideon tells Agliomene that she gave that magazine to Crux, and then she says, just kidding, it's not even a real publication. Just beautiful. All right, Bone fans, what do you think? Did I miss any? If so, leave them in the comments. And if you want another lock tomb fix, then check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.